Good evening, lovers. Hello, hello. Welcome to Copper with Katie. It's my third show this month. So excited to be with you and so excited to introduce you to James in a moment. Now, it's not James, my husband. <laughs> it's a different James. In fact, I'm interviewing two Jameses this week, which is hilarious to me. I mean, that name has such a strong vibration, clearly, in my life. And uh, I'm tonight speaking with James Walsham, uh, who is also known as the Honest Bloke on Instagram. He's super cool and he's coming on to chat with me all things love, relationships and dating from a man's perspective. So I'm really interested in hearing from guys at the moment and getting their perspective on love and dating because I think you know, we, uh, we, we women need to hear it and it's inspiring, especially when the guy is conscious and awake and up for doing his own healing work and intentional about what he wants to call in and all that good stuff, you know. So here he is. He's just joining now. I'm just going to bring him on. Here we go. I'm just adding him now. James Oliver Walsham, no, no less. So I hope. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, wait, am I You're coming, coming through? through loud and clear? Hi. Well, give it give it a second Hi. to settle. But oh my god, Facebook is actually working. <laughs> oh, good. I've, you've had some troubles, haven't you? With uh, yeah. Well, with I was platform. actually um, trying to do a live with our mutual friend Ben Bidwell last Thursday yes. night. Just couldn't get him on. I think his app might have been a bit out of date or something. I don't know why. I'm trying to. I'm trying oh, to get okay. some distance between me and the phone because it's very up close and personal. But... Yeah. Well, I've I've set it up. Um, I, mean, I can I can no. get close and join you here if you like. <laughs> I don't want to be that close, but um, I don't know how to. Are you, are you on your phone doing this? No, I've got a. So I've got. Got it proper oh. set up. I've got my little ring light. I've got it all. Oh. Set up. It's, it's holding it. Oh so my god! I'm okay, so can free. you please send me all of the details of everything you have? Because <laughs> I because literally by the end of this, my left hand is going to be killing me. <laughs> oh god! <sighs> so nice to see you. It's nice to see you as well. Thank you for having You're me on. You're very welcome. Thank you for taking the time to join us. What have you been up to today? Uh, I have been. So today I've been working. Mm -hmm. um, I I have a I have a full time I have a full time yeah. job, um, which is uh, I work in sales for a private medical insurance company, mm -hmm. and I work for a great company that I enjoy working mm -hmm. for. Um, so you know, not that I'm expecting anyone who works there to see me on here, but just in case. <laughs> um, but no, I you know, I, it, it's a job that I'm very grateful for. But I think you and I spoke when we spoke before. I said I've got kind of plans and intentions to kind of do something a little bit more kind of I guess in alignment with with my kind of per, you know passion and purpose and kind of working yeah. with kind of men and coaching yeah. um in that sort of space so but no that's that's what I've been up to today and just got in and um yeah I'm, I'm here and here you are does your current company know what else you do on the side <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're, um, yeah, I've, uh, obviously, I started the kind of the stuff in the social media space. Um, when was it? It was just into lockdown. Mm. And I didn't go, I was off for three months. So a few of the, you know, it got quite a lot of traction sort of over on Instagram, and quite a few people that I'm colleagues with, you know, have followed and, and give me some lovely feedback. Yeah. And um, I, I also, other than doing my job, you know, I'm, I'm on things like, you know, the charity panel and I, I sort of, you know, I, I get involved in other ways around kind of well-being and um, I'm on a panel of, of people that look after vulnerable customers and things like that. Yeah, so yeah. try my best to kind of, other than just be like the sales guy, just get involved in other ways as well. So Yeah, cool, cool. And while I'm listening to you, I hope you don't mind, but I'm a little bit distracted by this memory. I saw a little Instagram cool. Uh, was it an Instagram live or a little story or something that you did a while ago mm -hmm. and you were like well because I know you've just got in from work right you just come home from your corporate job because yep. you've got you're kind of running the two lives at the moment and, and I did that once too by the way yeah, when, I when I was transitioning out of corporate into big, you know training to be a coach and setting up a coaching company um, I was I was just doing the same mm -hmm. I was you know working doing the corporate and doing this on the side and yeah anywho I know the juggle 
And uh, I saw you do something the other day where you said, I now understand what it feels like for a woman when she gets home from work and the first thing she does is take her bra off. <laughs> <laughs> I did, yeah. That was. I'm, um, like, I'm like, oh my god, I, he's I was totally just talking to, be funny. to me because uh, that's the first thing I do. I get home, like, I'm like, get this bra off. I hate it. <laughs> the reference is the hair. So, so this is what I was referring yes. to. So yeah, I, I, like, I get to the end of the day and I've had this thing on. Like, my hair goes absolutely berserk if I don't have it in. I'm just kind of in this process of growing it out, and uh, it's, um, yeah, it's a nightmare. But I do get to the end of every and day, and I just pull, pull it off, and I'm like, right. <laughs> Like something out of her lessons is advert or something. I, I loved know. it. I loved it. Um, yeah, no, it's really good. Okay, back to serious. Back to serious. So tell me, <laughs> um, tell me. I have to say what's on my mind. You know, um, tell me about this. Your the passion job that you're moving towards. Tell me a little bit. Are you happy to share a little bit about that before we dive into? love and relationships so the thing of... with the whole like the thing the thing with like the so the honest bloke is this kind of moniker or name that i came up for this social media yeah. page and the the kind of background behind that is you know i'm so i'm, I'm 30 years old i have spent probably the second half of my 20s dealing with various challenges kind of personally mental health you know in that mental health space and been on a real journey with all of that and I really connected with the notion of just honesty and talking about how you're feeling. Um, it's something that's very, very difficult for us to do as human beings. And, and as men, we face challenges, uh, you know, with, with actually knowing how to articulate and yeah. speak those. And the journey that I've been on through in learning how to, um, how to, how to do that, which has been something that's taken me a lot of, a lot of time mm. and a lot of practice and a lot of getting things wrong. Um, but I've I've discovered a power in, in being honest and I'm I'm no longer scared of I don't think I'm scared about talking about anything that in terms of that is honest in terms yeah. of how I whether it's how I feel, what I'm thinking, what I've been through, you know, whatever that might yeah. be. And yeah, the honest book really is just I, I aim for me it's a safe space for me and it's allowed me to kind of show up and, and kind of be very authentic with who mm -hmm. I am. It's actually it's actually facilitated me stepping into more ever so than I ever have in my mm. life, this, this almost safe container for me has actually allowed me to kind of, yeah, step, step into who I am. And also, I guess the goal is to really kind of connect and, and demonstrate just how to talk about your stuff, you know, the, the, you know um, and uh, it's, been, it's been really, really great, you know, really, really well received. Um, you know, it's, uh, it, 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 yeah, it's one, it, it really feels like my purpose and it, it really feels like my mm. calling. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what it's been. And that's been going for just over six months now. So I started that back in April. Brilliant, isn't it? And I totally hear you on when you discover the power of honesty, like mm. there's no going back, is there? There's just no, no. going back. It's like, we, it's... you don't know how to be dishonest or like, yeah, yeah, it's not even you, you know how to, but it doesn't it doesn't serve you. You just feel like, what what am I lying about? Yeah, you know, whether it's lying to myself, whether it's lying to someone else. Yeah, and I think it's some people aren't consciously lying; they actually just don't know what their deeper truth is. And right, they, they do their best with what their knowledge is at that time. That's exactly that's a really really so, good point. Yeah, because it's not like we go around mm. consciously lying. It's just that we mm. haven't tapped into our truth and we haven't, we haven't got conscious to what our truth is and then practiced speaking that truth. It's a process, isn't it? Katie, I'm so, I'm so sorry to interrupt yeah. you. I've just realized I put a pizza in the <laughs> oven. Can I just quickly go and get it out? And just <laughs> like, it. this is- Yes, you, bring it. I'm so, th this is me on, this is, no, this is me on autopilot. So give me two, like I'll, bring 30 seconds. Bring us a slice. I just don't, I just don't want to burn my Bring us there. a slice, um, that's absolutely <laughs> fine. <laughs> So while he's gone, I'm just going to say hi to who's here. Say hello, whoever's joined. Natalie, I can see you're there. Mwah. Hi, darling. It's so good to see you. Um, who's here with us? Say hi. And actually, if you have any questions in advance for James, you're so welcome to type them in and we will respond or he will respond best he can. If you've got any questions for me, I'll respond best I can. Hi. Hello. Oh, Izzy's here. Hi, darling. So I've got a couple of people here that I know, right. Izzy and Natalie are on. I'm just saying hi. Kat's here. Hello, my darling. How you doing? Yeah, there's some, <laughs> there's some gorgeous single ladies on here, by the way. 
Hashtag oh, God, just say. <laughs> oh yeah, they're on. They, they're here checking you out. So you know. <laughs> Natalie wants pizza. Izzy to, wants pizza. I can't remember if I said it to Ben. <laughs> I was like, I'm worried. I'm worried. I'm going to get pimped out on this on this call because uh, it's a. <laughs> You're not meant to be. It's not meant to be that. But I'm not going to lie. Like the call that I had with Ben last week, it it, it kind of went that way a little bit. <laughs> so, <laughs> but he was available for it. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Don't worry, I won't ask you anything it's awful. Fine. Don't worry. Again, <laughs> I'm, I'm here for it. I'm happy to, to, to show up and talk about yeah. whatever. Tell so. me, so since discovering the power in honesty, how has it shifted your life? Uh, well, it's been a journey. I think um, one of the most kind of i'd say there's almost been like this fiercely like sharp incline in the trajectory of how much it's kind of helped yeah. me in the last so i turned 30 um in june so that was like i almost feel like i had like a like a massive awakening mm. you know as soon as i you know everyone you know, you know suddenly you're in the 30s and i don't know you feel you feel different but it just a, a lot of things shifted and aligned for me at that point and I really started to discover that actually honesty is where you discover your power. And um, the things that you're, you're unable to be honest mm. about with yourself or with others are generally things that you either don't understand or have felt some shame over and you haven't ever been given a safe space or container to yeah. explore them. And I have found that anything that I ever previously felt shame or embarrassment or fear about understanding was probably because my brain was telling me a story that it is something to be ashamed of and you know right. it's it's not normal and it's only me yeah. um and you know that's really you know oh you're awful and you shouldn't be thinking those things or feeling yeah. that way or that's not yeah. whatever um in overcoming that i just it's it's been able it's actually allowed me to yeah really i, I i've described that I, i've only ever really felt if i look back at anything up until maybe up until I turned 30, I feel like I've only ever been maybe 40 or 50% maximum kind of authentically myself. Mm. And in doing so, in, in being able to kind of break through that barrier and really show up more in the world as me, I've experienced the most wonderful connections in terms of friendships. Mm. You know, I've, I've got, you know, especially through the social media space, I've got friends all over the world now yeah. who I feel like I've created some yeah. extraordinary powerful deep meaningful connections and relationships with people all yeah. over the world who get me in ways that you know some of my older friends maybe don't yeah um so i think that really ties in or, or, or maybe echoes what you kind of say about calling in things and you know in really kind of attracting i mean maybe not from a romantic perspective i'm sure we're going to talk about that in a moment in terms of my kind of recent yeah. journey there but um it's certainly just in terms of connection and in terms of um people just appearing in your yeah. life that all of a sudden are just like these are my people you know Th these people get yeah. me these people see me these people actually you know think i'm brilliant you know they see me for yeah. who i am and they, they really yeah. value that so, and that's, that's a wonderful feeling because obviously I, that was, that's reciprocal. I'm connecting with people that we share similar values and similar views on whether the world or the types of conversations that we enjoy sharing. So yeah, it's, 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 it's powerful. It's really, it's, you know, it's not easy. It's not to sit there and be like, Oh, just start telling the truth and the world changes. But there's obviously a lot of work that goes into it, oh. but it's, it's certainly something. I, I, I think, I think the world, you know, I think the encourage. world definitely begins to change. Definitely. And I, I feel you like I really I feel I think we all feel energy and, and I, I, you know, I'm particularly tuned in and like, I feel you're on like just then actually made me I don't know if I exhaled or inhaled, but I think I did both. But when you said you feel those really deep connections with people all over the world through social media and these deep friendships that yeah. you created, I'm like, oh, God, I can feel that like there's there's i can feel the authenticity there i know that you're not just saying the words you know it's yeah it's mm. really really beautiful yeah. really beautiful uh and danielle's saying oh hi danielle um saying i love finding my <laughs> tribe absolutely i like that i like that language as well um so there's a question 
earlier from Natalie and I'm wondering, do I read that now or do I ask my question? I don't know. I might start with Natalie's question. I'm, I'm terrible. With I know. If I, I feel like if I don't, come sort of if live, I don't so... ask this now, I might miss it. So let's mm. go for it. Um, uh, okay. It says, I would love to hear James's perspective on dating and at what stage he feels he can be vulnerable with a date, e.g. always from the get-go or once trust is established. So I think that's a great question that totally ties in with talking about honesty. So, yeah, over yeah. to you. I'm going to try and, by the way, just set my hand I... up somewhere else because I can't hold this like this for mm. much longer. <laughs> so <laughs> don't carry worry. on. Um, are you guys getting any feedback? Because oh. I, I don't know why. I can hear some of the video from our, like, maybe our conversation five minutes ago. I don't know if it's coming through on my oh, headphones. That's annoying. Um, can you hear anything? I can't. Can anybody else hear anything? Just let me know whether, because it could just be my earphones and I might just take them out and see if it changes. Yeah, that's annoying. But, um, um, it's just a bit echoey or maybe may, it might be a bit more recent. It might be sort of just like five seconds behind. Oh, that's really annoying. Yeah, I can, it's actually, it's caught up and I'm, I can hit. It, may, it might be a bit more recent. It might be sort of just like five seconds behind. Oh, that's really annoying. Yeah, I can, it's actually, it's caught up oh, and I'm, I've I can got... hit. Oh, yeah. I've got, it's got really bad. It's got really bad. Oh, that's really annoying. I think your headphones was better. How's that now? Like... Oh, it's weird. I think nobody, the people watching it aren't having a problem, but you and I are. Okay. Yeah, that's not great, is it? Facebook strikes again. No, it's, it's, it's like three or four seconds behind, isn't it? I don't know if, because I've never done lives through Facebook. The, I don't know if, yeah, I don't I'm know if it's the... take the, these out and see what happens. I don't know if, because I've never done lives through Facebook. I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if it's the... Take these out and see what happens. I don't know if it's through Facebook. That's really bizarre, isn't it? I wasn't sure I if you were hearing it or whether it was just yeah, me. No, it's so, like, yeah, no, it's no, so really no. weird. That's really weird. That's what you want to do, isn't it? I wasn't sure if you were hearing it's it or whether it was just me. No, it's worse without it. No, it's worse without it. How about really weird? That's been really strange. You want to do it now? Should we move over to the ground? No, no, no. No, no, that's so bad. No, that's so bad. What do you want to do now? Should we move over to the what do you reckon? Okay, so with headsets on, it's perfect for me. But right, what about okay. for you? Let, let me just plug back in. How bizarre. I can still hear everything you say again about five seconds after. Do you want to leave the live and then and then, and come then back jump back in? on? Um, yeah, just let me, try. Let me just, just comment when you're back in and I'll see if I can invite you. Fingers crossed. Okay. Yeah, I think it's fine for me, guys, and it's fine for all of you, but it's not working for James. It's, uh, isn't that weird? Facebook strikes again. Watch this space. We might have to abandon ship. Here we go. Uh, let me just click. Uh, hold on. Let me see if I can invite him. Add. Add. It's adding him. Fingers and toes crossed. Let's see. Let's see if this works. Hey, hey. Can you see and Hi. hear me? Yes. Okay. I haven't got okay. any feedback at the moment, so we'll just, I guess, carry okay. on from where we left Let's off. Let's see how that goes then. Yeah. So do you want me to read? How about I just go back and read Natalie's question again? Yeah, I think again. the questions have maybe Hold gone off my second. screen. I'm not sure. Um, I've got it. Okay. So Natalie's saying, I would love to hear James's perspective on dating and at what stage, and by the way, just to say, now, um, James, you're single right am, now, yes. aren't you? Yeah, okay. So your perspective on dating and at what stage he feels he can be vulnerable with a date, e.g. always from the get-go or once trust is established. Uh, I think that, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you should maybe go, I think trust is an important aspect. I think qualifying before you go on a date is always really important as well. I think it depends on how well you have gotten to know someone before you're about to go and spend an intimate couple of hours over dinner or having drinks with them. So my kind of experience has always been 
to I, I think generally I've, I've probably had enough of a good conversation with someone to assess whether I'm going to be able to be vulnerable with them and talk about things that matter to me whether it's I mean I don't know mm-hmm. if I'm going to necessarily go in with you know all like all the trauma and all of the stuff <laughs> all in <laughs> I think you have to obviously have some tact there but um no yeah. I think it's about how well you qualify the person you're about to go on a date with anyway and you know so for me vulnerability and honesty comes up front like you should always be that way um and don't if you if you fear that there's things that you could share that could scare someone off you know and we're talking things about who you are as a person you know things that matter to you then Mm. Mm. ultimately it i think that that's really where the kind of the point of well say them and and talk you know speak your truth and be who you are because yeah. Do not try and shape those things or deny those parts of you to accommodate someone else because ultimately you're going to be getting off on the wrong foot um, and you're setting yourself yeah. up for a, yeah. a pretty flawed connection and uh, a, a quite an insincere or ingenuine relationship based on, you know, keeping yeah. keeping parts of you hidden and not sharing who you are. So I think kind of vulnerability and, and honesty from just from the get-go, really. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you mm. on that. Yeah, absolutely. I think trust is built and earned and then you open up more and more and more as, as time goes on and the relationship improves. But I think, yes, yeah, I mean, straight up honesty mm. is kind of key. Yeah, I think honesty yeah, about who you are and also your intention as well. I think honesty around intention yeah. is really important. So that's that's something that I can certainly hand on heart say that I've learned very recently that I've not always done um always always tried my best to be but there were times where I wasn't honest with myself about why I was dating and what I was looking to get from dating so do you do you feel like you can share a bit more on that awakening and yeah, awareness absolutely um I yeah. so I've been single I've been you know without a, you know let's say a partner that I'm I'm you know in a relationship with for two yeah. nearly yeah just over two years so you're coming up kind of yeah, August 2018, I think my last relationship ended. And mm-hmm. that for me ended in a way that was very, very, uh, you know, I'll hold my hands up, was extremely traumatic for me. Um, and that was, it brought up a lot of stuff that I've done an awful lot of work in to understand why it was so traumatic. Um, and I've managed to go through right. and do a lot of work and join a lot of dots up and it's given me a lot of closure and it's really helped me kind of, yeah, understand myself more deeply. But um since Beautiful. that relationship ended, I went through, you know, certainly a, a period of about two years, nearly, nearly two years, maybe up until about May time of this year, where I had been dating, I'd been going out and whether it was just casually dating or you know, whether it was just, just something physical, whether it was just, you know, sex or whether it was, you know, going through these, uh, and I would say, I was always being what I thought was I was being as honest as I could be with myself at the time. And I was always very Mm. clear with my intention, you know, in that I would always say I'm if I if I realized that I wasn't didn't have a connection with that person or I wasn't quite ready yet, I would explain at that time. But I was still going out into Mm. the dating world um, looking for connection in order to I was almost using it to gauge where I was at on my healing journey. And the reality was as even though I communicated as best as I possibly could. And even though I was saying mm. to these girls, you know, look, I'll, actually, do you know what? The second I maybe felt that there was a bit of a connection brewing and I wasn't able to reciprocate on the same level, I was honest straight away. But I was, you know, upon reflection, I was still entering into a physical relationship with someone who, even if I was being as honest as I thought I could have been, there's still going to be some. you're still messing with someone's emotions there. And I was still entering into a scenario where they could form attachment and they could be you know generating feelings for me and every time I was going through this almost cycle and I was going you know at the beginning it was you know there's lots of I don't know you just well it's obviously very physical and there's lots of flirting and things like that at the beginning um you know I was certainly happy to engage in that and if it became physical and there was Mm -hmm. sex involved I was certainly at that point I was looking back I was using that to try and heal myself and I was looking to try and find something Mm. that made me feel better and Mm. numbed the pain of the healing that I hadn't actually done um right and but I was going through this same cycle and and you know I was 
I, I, you know, I say I nearly two years of going through this process and I was allowing, allowing women into my life, into my bed. And it wasn't, um, you know, looking back on it, whilst I, I, I never lied, I never told anyone that I was able, I was, I was looking for a relationship. I never gave anyone any false hope. Mm. I never, ever, yeah, never lied to anyone. I lied to myself in the fact that I wasn't ready. I wasn't, I, I shouldn't have been, you know, my heart wasn't open. Because even, even though you were being honest, you were still using the experience as a bit of a band-aid. Absolutely. Or a bit of a crutch. I really was. That's exactly what it was. And it took yeah. me yeah. until, uh, so it was back at the maybe beginning of lockdown. I, started, I, I was on a dating app. I connected with someone. We had a, um, we, we saw each other for a couple of months. And I went through this experience of someone who actually, we, we had a wonderful emotional connection. There was definitely a um mm. there was definitely a really wonderful understanding of who we were as human beings we really kind of got each other mm. but she felt i mean you know in her words she fell head over he was in love with me and i suddenly felt nothing but emptiness and shame and sadness in my heart and it was mm. i felt you know i just felt guilt because i was like even though i'd been honest and i tried to cater for someone else's emotions because i hadn't been true to myself I'm, I've, yeah. I've ended up hurting someone again and that was again I, I you know i look back at that and i go mm. if i cannot open my heart and be re willing to if i'm not able to receive love i should not be dating i should not be entertaining the um i should not be entertaining the uh mm. anything you know the attention flirting i shouldn't be on dating apps i shouldn't i should I just i i finally looked back and went i've i've been lying to myself for the last two years i i you know i've just not been able to what I get you, but what about if, what about if the girl had exactly the same intention as you? What if she was like, "Look, I'm, I'm not going to get emotionally mm -hmm. attached to you. I'm, I, I'm not feeling that yeah. with this. It's not even where I'm at. I kind of just, I just want to have someone to have a bit of fun with, have have some yeah. sex, have someone to go to the cinema with occasionally, flirt yeah. with. I mean, if she was on exactly the same page, do you think Absolutely. it was? Absolutely. Yeah, I, or do I you think. Still feel I think like it could have done. Um that would have been fine and I, I i don't uh i think one thing i'm always very mindful of is is i don't ever want to paint the picture that i think girl women aren't capable of that because women can show up and experience yeah. sex in a physical way in a non-committal way in the same way that men can um and i and i yeah. you know i certainly applaud any women who, you know, who, who do that because we should all enjoy sex as a physical you know as a physical thing anyway mm. but i think where the guilt came mm. from was that you know i was ignoring and making excuses for I'm, I'm you know i i think i see myself and i've always been someone who's quite emotionally intelligent i can pick up on emotions quite well and yeah you know there were there were times where i ignored those to continue getting what i needed out of it and it ended up causing some distress and some pain right um so right. you know that's right. where i you know i let's say I, I didn't feel like i'd done myself as you know a I'd, I'd done her and myself a disservice and I'd been you know I don't want to cause anyone any pain and my pain has ultimately reflected yeah. and I put that out into the world and caused someone else pain but that's yeah that's a that's a really great awareness isn't mm. it you know what we're experiencing is being reflected back to us all yeah. the time so this this girl that you're speaking mm -hmm. of her pain that you were witnessing yeah. was just a reflection of your yeah. own pain absolutely right so you're you're at a place now where you you want to have reflected back to you your healing and your transformation, your maturity, your yeah. growth, your respect, and all mm -hmm. that good stuff. Yeah, right? I definitely do. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I, yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, beautiful. No, that's beautiful. I had a coach once, and now I'm gonna. I, I might get this wrong, and I definitely don't remember all the details. But I remember him sharing with me. This is when I was single and he was coaching me. He was my support when I was calling in mm -hmm. my guy. And it was really awesome to have a male coach to get a male perspective because he was like totally the empowered mm -hmm. masculine. He really modeled to me what a man could be. He modeled like emotional intelligence. You know, he loved me unconditionally, no matter how I showed up on a coaching call, whether I was being a right little yeah. bitch 
or bawling my eyes out crying or like really empowered and you know properly in my power he loved me no matter what he was awesome like he totally just showed up for me again and mm. again and again it was wonderful um and I remember him sharing something with me and it's, it's sort of around the science of connection that even if you kiss somebody, as soon as a bodily fluid is exchanged, <laughs> so even through saliva, let alone intercourse, for a woman, I'm pretty sure it's for a woman, but I could be wrong. It could be for men too. And let me know if you know oh. the answer. Um, but there's a, there's a connection created. Mm -hmm. Whether you want one or not, you, know, you can go into to a relationship with like the basic intention of, I'm just, just going to yeah. have sex. I, I'm going to feel nothing. I'm going to want nothing afterwards. It's just plain old sex. But usually, and I think it's for a woman, but I, obviously I was hearing this information from my own perspective at the time when I was yeah, dating. And, uh, and I totally, I mean, yeah, I could, have the, I could have sex sometimes and not feel an attachment, really. Mm. But really, like, there was always a lingering something afterwards. I couldn't ever just walk away and be like, oh, mm -hmm. cut and dry. I personally couldn't. And I felt this chemical... It was like a chemical reaction in yep. my body where my, my, my physicality was kind of communicating, like, is, is this your partner? There was something quite primal. Yeah, like sure. you've, you've, you've exchanged something with this person. Does this mean he's going to be the father of your mm -hmm. child? Like, it was really primitive. Yep. So I wonder, like, I, the reason I'm saying that is because this coach was sort of saying to me, Katie, if you, if you want to kind of fuck around, go for it. But as a woman, just just go into it kind of mm. knowing that attachments are being created left, right and center, yeah. you know, and that's, that upsets your energy. It does. It really does. And that's something that I definitely got to grips yeah. with through, I mean, that I have, I've certainly been through times in my life where I've, um, and I think I've always been very conscious. So if I've ever been through a period of, let's say promiscuity and I've been like, I don't want to, you know, I'm not looking for a relationship. I've just come out of one. I want to go and fuck around and I yeah. just want to do whatever I want to do. I've always, I've always been conscious of what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And, or, or to the best of my ability, I've been as conscious as I could be at that time. Um, yeah. But I, I agree. And that's, that's the thing I, I think what you're describing there is what I'm picking up on is maybe not just from a, maybe not quite from a, um, a perspective of looking for like, you know, the mother of my children and that sort of asset, but certainly the emotional part of what you're describing, I completely think that's there. Um, yeah. and yeah. ultimately it's because deep down whilst like we all, we all crave that connection. We all are looking for that, whether it yeah. is not in that moment, because you're still, you're, even if you're in a moment where you're deeply traumatized in loads of pain, you don't want to be in a relationship, but you're still looking for it. You're just, you're in a journey where you're not open to it at yeah. that time. So yeah. it's just, um, yeah, that, yeah, I think that's something that I've definitely become aware of. And that's where I had to take a step back. I had to take a step back from dating yeah. in, so what was it? Ju July. Okay. I want to hear more on that. So pause. I want to read Natalie's comment. It's a beautiful comment here. Nina. Hi. Uh, soul breath what was hold on let me read nina's comics i quite like it it's simple as it, it it's simple as it is complicated when you swap energy you create connection and everyone yeah. is a mirror yeah beautiful and natalie says a chemical is here we go here's the science thanks natalie <laughs> a chemical is released in a woman during after sex bonding hormone that isn't present in the male until the male bonds with the female i think outside of sex Dr. Tara Swart mentioned it on a podcast recently. Oh, beautiful. I'm going to have to check that go. out. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a primitive thing for a woman, like just something, a chemical goes off in her mm. body. She's like, Oh, you are now, <laughs> you know, going to be the father. of Where's my, my baby? I must stay attached to you. <laughs> yeah. I, I must, I must see you again. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So we paused on your dating mm. journey. Where are, where are you at now? So I've been, so three months ago, I actually entered into a period of very conscious celibacy. Um, I, I realized Amazing. that I'd been through, it was after the situation ended with this, this girl that I'd been dating for a couple of months. And I mm. thought, if my heart, my heart is just not open, I'm, you know, I've got to do the work. I've got to start healing. I've got to actually start leaning in and listening to what that pain is rather than just trying to mask it. And yeah. um, oh, I just started getting the feedback again in my headphones. Have you got anything? 
I don't no. know what keeps happening. That's annoying. Um, do you want to leave and come back in again? Yeah. Let me let me do that before I go into it. So yeah, that's that, fine. Uh, but but co comment, come back in and comment. Yeah, sure, I will. One so sec. I can. So this is great, isn't it? People I'm loving this conversation. Any other questions from anybody? I'm super open to answering them or having James answer them, should I say? He's back already. That's awesome. Hold on one second. Uh, how do I add him? Add. Add. Let's see. Should be here. Internet. There we go. Hola. Hello. Have I got you? Hi, I got Hello. you. Okay, great. I think... I think within this conversation, there's probably like a five second lag between what, what we say and then it presenting on Facebook. And I think that's what I'm like, I'm hearing back that some, there's some kind of lag in the sound. Um, but it's not there. So I, I'm fine now. Okay. So, um, okay, great. It seems to be leaving and yeah. leaving and coming back. Yeah, seems perfect. To fix Thank it. you for so, doing that. Okay, so three months right. in of total celibacy. Is that where you're at right now? Is that a long time um, for you, James? I, uh, do you know what, actually, before, so I didn't realise, before the girl I dated earlier this year, I'd actually been, you know, celibate for about wow. six months, okay. just kind of But not consciously, so there's a like, difference between sort of, doing it consciously and, and just didn't get yeah. lucky. And I think that, I think that, yeah, the <laughs> thing with lock, lockdown right. and all that sort of stuff, but no, I think maybe, I think on some level I was, I was, abs I, I'd said to myself, I was fine with the fact that I wasn't mm -hmm. seeing anyone, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think I'd gone, right, I'm going to not right. see someone, you know, I was probably still flicking on dating yeah. apps and, you know, doing all of those ego driven behaviors of, oh, you know, does this, you know, what, what girls think I'm attractive, but I'm not actually open to, you know, yeah, I was doing yeah, all of that. Yeah. So something but i got called into it by again a guy that i follow who's an addiction specialist a wonderful guy called drew and he actually put up a post about celibacy and i just went i just had to send him a message and went fuck bro just just talk talk me through it come on i said this is this has come up for me a couple of times in the last like the idea has come up for me a couple of times in the last mm. year and he was literally saying if you've been thinking about it if it's something that confuses you or you don't know if you want to ask any questions he was like, I'm looking to get a group of guys wow. together who kind of just want to link arms and go through that process together. So, uh, so he did and I did, and th there's a group of about 10 wow. of us and we, you know, jump on a zoom call every couple of weeks. And, um, I think one of the most amazing things about it has been that men don't generally have open vulnerable conversations about intimacy and sex. Okay. Um, I think what was great when we first jumped on is we've all got different intentions. We all set our own parameters and our kind of own guidelines mm -hmm. for what celibacy mm -hmm. meant to us as well. And, you know, initially it was, I, I had very, very strict. I said, obviously no sex. Um, initially there was no masturbation. Oh, right. um, and there was no, um, so I went kind of hell for leather with it. Um, but then there was also, one of my things was I said no ego driven behaviors towards women. And those would be things like flirting with women just so I can feel like they find me attractive when I've got no interest in actually pursuing a, you know, a situation with them. Yeah. Um, no dating apps, because again, you know, it's the yeah. same thing when you're matching with women and you know, when they match with you, they think that you're open to yeah. a conversation. Yeah. And whilst it's, whilst it is very much a window shopping atmosphere and environment, there's still people there looking for connection and they think they may have one with you. So even that tiny little interaction is setting someone up for disappointment. Wow. You're really throwing so, out the ego with this, aren't you? Yeah. I, wow. I've, I, yeah, it's a huge part of where I've, I've learned a lot about where I've come yeah. from or how I've lived a lot of my life has been very ego centered and ego driven. Yeah, um, wow. So I decided to just cut all that off. And as a result, over the last few months, I've actually, whilst I've not been back to therapy, I think I may still do so. I've had some things come up for me and I've been able to join dots up around the trauma that why my last situation was so traumatic and why it really kind of fucked me up so badly mm. in a way that, you know, you know, the kind of, I, I always describe therapy as a process where you're struggling to understand something because you haven't got all of the pieces to a yeah. puzzle. 
And when you go and speak to a therapist, all you do is you give them the information and, you know, they ask you questions that allow you to find those other pieces. And all of a sudden you can see yeah. the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had some of those, I've had some of those really big puzzle pieces just drop in for me over the last few months. And, you know, I'm able to actually, you know, reflect and, and look at what happened and why it was so, so powerful for me and why it really kind of messed with me. And in, 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 in coming to some of these kind of, you know, these huge light bulb moments, these huge kind of, they, they've been epiphanies. They really have. And I've just gone, yeah. right. Okay, cool. Well, I've just suddenly learned all of these things about myself and how I've shown up in relationships and, you know, how actually I haven't been perfect. I haven't, you know, I've played the victim card. I've been telling myself a story that I was a victim for the last two years. And actually I ignored a bunch of red flags in my last relationship, but I completely didn't honor any of my own boundaries. And I set myself up to get hurt quite, you know, quite obviously now. Wow. So, and I, I just, yeah, I've just been through, it's, it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. It's been a very, kind of big spiritual yeah. awakening well almost. i think it so. is a spiritual i mean it, it is literally a spiritual awakening mm. because when you drop the mm. ego and probably let me know if this feels true to you but what i because what i'm hearing is is like when you you've essentially dropped a habit of behavior that was very ego-based right and, and a few habits of behavior mm. that were ego-based it was a various ways that you would get a sense of significance and connection and love and value and, and so on from the world, right? From sort of these external sources. And you've just, you've cut the cord on that. Yep. You've given that up. And, 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 you know, and we do that. We have our sabotaging behavioral habits often in place so that we don't have to feel what needs felt so that we don't have to mm -hmm. get vulnerable and look at our stuff address it, feel the pain yep. of it and move through it. It's like, I don't want to feel that. So I'm going to go swipe on my app. I don't want to feel that. So I'm going to go flirt with her just to get some sense of significance met, you know, and giving all of that up. Yep. You've literally allowed the truth of who you are, which is your spirit, to, to come through and show you the way because that's your wisdom and you have yep. your answers and you know, you know your truth. You don't need a therapist to give you your answers. I'm not saying that there's not a place for therapy. There totally is. Um, and it can mm. absolutely speed things up. Um, but you're able to listen. You're creating space to listen to your inner yep. wisdom that has all your answers. Mm -hmm. That's freaking gorgeous. Yeah, it's in there. Yeah. I think I think that I'm I'm very lucky to I, I've been through I've been through process of going to a therapist um a few times yeah. in my life and I've always described it as that process because we don't know what no. we don't know. Um and we always operate from hopefully we always operate from a place of truth, but sometimes that truth is only what we know to be yeah. true at that time. We don't know the deeper yeah. understandings in yeah. why. You know, we don't actually and that's just that's a mm. skill set. That's something that you know, I always say to people who are struggling um, with anything relating to mental health, I'm like, OK, so if you had an issue with, um, you know, if I presented you with a problem, like a really, really complicated mm. maths problem and you weren't weren't able to solve it, who would you go and speak to? You'd go and speak to a mathematics professor at the local, you know, at your university. Totally. And speak to an expert. Yeah. Um, and once you then get shown how to solve that problem, you've got you've got tools in yeah. your tool belt. And you're able to, you know, and, and it's, I don't know, things like mindfulness, meditation, all of these things that allow you to, you know, I've done them, you know, at various times throughout my life. And all it's done is it's allowed me to become an observer mm. of what's going on mm. within me rather than sort of experiencing it and feeling like I'm a victim. I, so to I, it. I told myself, I told myself the story. I, I told myself I was the story that I told myself the story that I was a yeah. victim for the last two years. And I believed it because my ego allowed that to mean that I hadn't done anything wrong. The other person had, the other person cheated, the other person did yeah. this, did it. Yeah, yeah. um, whereas actually the lessons I've learned about how I showed up in that relationship are that I ignored all, all sense of, I completely abandoned any sense of, of self-worth and I made that person entirely responsible for my mm. happiness, which I completely and utterly love bombed that person and went, hell for leather with <laughs> wanting to be in love with them right yeah. at the start sort of so I, I didn't qualify no. I, I, I wasn't wasn't looking at things yeah. objectively and I was just so desperate to be loved 
And I also showed up in ways that I, I had a, one of the most bizarre sort of dots being joined up in, in my kind of whole experience has been that I, every, every time I've ever been in love in my life, I've, first of all, I've always gone for girls that need fixing and I'm trying to, you know, to yeah. be the fixer and the, the savior and the yeah. knight in shining armor. Um, and that girls have got trauma and their own stuff that need to fix. And I'm, you know, it's my job to fix them. Um, Maybe also to avoid fixing and... your own stuff though, right? Yeah, I think Part so. Yeah, definitely. Because I didn't know what my mm. own stuff was. Mm. Def um, and the big thing was that I realized that every relationship I've ever shown up in, I've always, always, I feel like I've shown up in so much of an emotional way in terms of, you know, being emotionally mm. supportive, creating space, you know, doing everything that I can to be so perfectly, you know, almost in the feminine in terms of that relationship. You know, I'm not, don't want to be like the masculine and just be yeah. the provider and the alpha and the, you know, all that stuff. And I actually realized this is some therapy stuff, you know, that I realized the reason that I've done that is because uh, when my mum, my mum and dad, you know, you know, our caregivers, you know, their relationship broke down because my dad didn't do that. Um, and my dad did not provide, didn't know how to show up emotionally and support my mum and their relationship ended. Um, it happened at a very poignant time for me. I was about 15 mm -hmm. or 16 mm -hmm. years old. Um, and that became a powerful, powerful imprint mm -hmm. on me. And it's, it served me. It's been there my entire life in terms of all of the adult connections I've ever tried to make. And the ones where I've been in love, I have just gone, I've abandoned any element of who I am. And I've just tried to show up so emotionally that that person can never, ever <laughs> leave me because I'm doing everything that I need to do to make sure that they stay with me forever. Yeah. So, yeah, that's brilliant. So there's some, some deep, deep shit there, by the way, but it's, like, but it's awesome self-awareness. Yeah. It's really awesome self-awareness. And I mm. know that the women that will be watching this and I'm watching right now and myself included, you know, it's very inspiring to meet a man that is so self-aware actually, and is willing to, to go deep and do that work. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. 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 I would say the same for a Thank woman you. as well, but you know, I'm not, I have so many conversations with women. It's, it's a real pleasure to speak with guys on this and just open up. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's uh, if I can. So I, I had a I, I saw I was speaking to a wonderful friend of mine who um, she, her name's Serena. She lives in Boston, and we connected through Instagram. We had a conversation yesterday about, and I talked to her about the fact that I was coming on here, and I was I was really interested when we were having this discussion because. I, I, you know, obviously I, I'm not familiar with, we've only connected mm. recently and I've only seen a few things mm. that you do. And I think the work that you mm. do is wonderful. And what I'd be really interested to hear, you know, or find out from maybe your perspective mm. is that I think within kind of like dating and like, obviously we're talking in, you know, predominantly heterosexual mm -hmm. relationships between women and men is that women, you know, I think have a lot more emotional kind of awareness and are maybe a lot more emotionally ma mature or in touch with their full kind of emotional spectrum mm -hmm. than a lot of men are. Um, obviously, we're yeah, generalizing. I all, think so, yeah. All women or all <laughs> yeah. men are like this. Um, but I wondered what the kind of, if they're, you know, the, the work that you do with women is about making sure that they are doing their work as well and being fully emotionally That's available sick. because yeah. I, I feel like there's a narrative um, maybe uh, as a as a man who who talks to a lot of men, and I see so much emotional unavailability and disconnect in men, and that's the mm, work that I'm mm. trying to do. But I, yeah, I, I've never really thought about the work that women may need to do, and whether you get women who are you know hoping for these these men to show up, and whether they have done their mm, work, you mm. know, um, because I think that's what I started experiencing in even in the last like. So I jumped back on a dating app for the first time in the last okay. week. And it was something that I consciously did to kind of yeah. check in. And, but, but again, I'm doing it because I feel like I've done yeah. some healing. Don't know that I'm ready for anything yet, but I was like, I'm checking in now and I'm looking at beautiful women on, so on, on, mm. you know, hinge mm. or whatever. And suddenly the physical aspect is no longer as important. I'm all of a sudden like, where are you at with your soul? Where are you yeah. at with your heart? Totally. Where are you at with your work? Where are you at yeah. with your trauma? Yeah. And so, yeah, I just wondered if, if, you know, what that's like for women to go through in terms of that process Yeah, well, no, yeah. totally. And it's interesting. You said something just now and it made me kind of think, well, a woman that expects a man to be emotionally available and healed is very entitled. It's a very entitled energy if she's not also doing the work, right? So, yeah. So, and, and I guess for the women that, and I could be generalizing a little bit here, but I will absolutely include myself in what I'm about to say. If you're walking around believing that men 
are emotionally unavailable and you know god you know is there such a thing as a man that's doing his work and you know if you're having that conversation you really do have to put it's the mirror again you really do have to put the mirror up and ask yourself well am i yeah. like what am i bringing to this relationship what mm. am i bringing in my baggage from you know the last 20 years am i bringing in my childhood am i bringing in my past relationship like what am i bringing and yeah but, you wouldn't believe the amount that you see on dating apps where women are telling you what they don't want. Um, so you, they'll be saying, don't do this. Don't be this. Um, you know, yeah. Things like don't bring yeah. your baggage in. And that's, that, that screams to me. That you <laughs> you're are bringing your baggage in. <laughs> talking, you, you, you're bring, totally. you're bringing your baggage in because if you're, if, if you're, if you're there presenting yourself yeah. to the world, like I'm yeah. here to date, I want to, I want to yeah. find a partner. What do you want? Well, what I yeah, don't totally. Want but what, but we, we create is... what we when we verbalize and make our focus what we don't want. That's what we're creating and what we're asking for, right? Yeah, but I guess, and also, what well, what you could be doing is you could be saying, "So I don't want someone." I mean, this is a very very trivial example. I don't want someone who is um, introverted. You say, "I want someone who's quite outgoing mm. and quite you know." But extra, so someone who says, "Okay, I'm an extrovert." you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm out there, I'm loud, I'm yeah. me, I'm, yeah. you know, whatever. You haven't qualified yourself in. You've just said yeah. what you don't want. You've opened yourself to a hundred thousand different types yeah. of extrovert that you could only re yeah. really fit a very small yeah. margin. So yeah, I think being able to vote, you know, actually articulate what it is that you are looking for and actually having, being able to say, here's what I want. Like, that's something that maybe I, I, I think that's upon my reflection and jump, jumping back in. I've noticed that I don't see that as much as I would like as someone who I feel like I've done or I'm still doing my work. It's being able to see that from the yeah. other side as no, well. That's so. really cool. It's interesting for clarity as a therapeutic coach. Uh, the work I'm doing with women is mm. about healing and it's all about preparing them Love to that. meet him. So there's no strategies or tips or tools on how to get him. It's how can you prepare yourself yep. to bring the best you into the relationship and how can you mm -hmm. energetically align yourself to be a vibrational match for him so that he can find you yeah, sure. too. So it's just like getting rid of any energetic blocks in the way of the two of you meeting, which means, and getting rid Amazing. of energetic blocks is emotional pain and trauma, sabotaging mm -hmm. belief systems you know, sabotaging behavioral habits, all that stuff is, is blocking you from meeting him or him from meeting you, you know? So it's about doing the work. Love it. Um, we've had, <laughs> yeah, no, totally. It's all about the work. Um, I don't surface level anything. Now I feel like I need to just scroll back through the comments for a second because there was a quest. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I'm not going to read out all the comments, ladies. I'm, I, I'm getting a bit lost in them and I don't want to lose the thread with what James is saying. Uh, how does James cope? I saw one yeah, about how loneliness. does James cope with loneliness mm. during this period of celibacy? It's a beautiful question. That is a great question. Um, I've coped really well because I've realised that actually loneliness, um, that whole concept of loneliness versus being alone. Yeah. Um, I'm not lonely. Yeah. Because I, I enjoy my own company now. Yeah. You know, I fully, fully enjoy my own company. I do not. Uh, you know, right now, because I'm not engaged with anyone, you know, romantically, I really do feel like that real, that stereotypical thing of, you know, you can't love someone until you know how to love yourself. You can't, yeah. you know, be with someone until yeah. you can be on your own. Like, whilst that's shit that you'll see on an Instagram quote, and it's very, you know, cliche, it's totally 100% true. true. Mm. And there is, oh. there, there's fabric <laughs> to what that actually... <laughs> I told you my hand would give up eventually. The arms Ooh. are getting tired. Yeah. <laughs> carry on <laughs> are you there oh no what's happened i haven't paused you or something have i oh god are we still here hold on what's happened what's happened oh no oh i have i've done something haven't i oh god can you guys still see me and hear me let me what's happened here um can someone comment and let me know if you can still see me or hear me or have I just lost James? Let me know, please. Oh, hi, Sally. Hi, Yaz. There's so many fantastic comments here. 
Oh, so Daniel can hear, can see me. Great, you've got me. So it must just be James. So I'm sure he'll come back on. He got kicked off for some reason. Uh, what's Yaz saying? Love the honesty. Would love to hear more about what James is looking for. From Yeah, I'm going to ask him that question too. What's he looking for? Um, let me see if I can find James. No, he's not on. All right, let's give him a minute to arrive. Hi, Sally. Okay, we'll wait for him to come back. So James is the one with all the cool tech and he's the one that keeps getting kicked off. <laughs> um, let me just read these, questions, these comments. Yes, yeah, love the honesty. Would love to hear more about what James is looking for from a woman's dating profile as a man who's done the work, looking for a woman who's done the work. Always curious about balancing the serious, about what you're looking for and who you are and the fun, playful side. Oh, yes, nice. Um, where's James gone? Come back, James. Um, I'm glad you've all got me. Well, if he comes back, yes, we can ask him that. Danielle said, I find if I see someone that states the negative, like I don't want to date a vegan, I don't want, I don't match with that person. It's red flags to me. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Nina, you attract someone who loves themselves as much as you love yourself. Amen to that. Yes. Uh, yes, we're talking about profiles. Uh, Katie Marie, hello. Good to see you. Oh, hold on. He's just messaged me. My phone has just completely crashed. I've got a backup jumping on now. Okay, he's coming. His phone has crashed. No worries. Funny how I dropped my phone at exactly the same time. Uh, Nina's saying we attract partners who reflect back to us what we need to heal within ourselves. They trigger it. It's beautiful once you realize to stop creating pain. Absolutely. Yeah. And actually, Nina, yeah, where are you? What is Fintorn Foundation? The Fintorn Foundation. Is that, what is that? I want to know more about that, please. Um, yes, that's what happened when my repressed trauma surfaces, but my whole life makes sense and I found pieces of the puzzle were missing. Yeah. But, you know, we don't want to feel that tough stuff. We don't want to revisit old traumas, do we? But actually, that's where our healing is. And I thought it was really interesting what James was saying around him playing the victim for the last couple of years. I really love that level of self-awareness. And I, I too, had lived a victim for much of my life after my mum's suicide. Uh, that's, a, that's a whole other story, but definitely has been a massive part of my own healing and transformational journey and why I came on, you know, went on to become a self-love coach and found the school of self, the school of self-love and all that good stuff. But I really believe the victim is an absolute gift. I kind of love it when the victim shows up because I think the victim is always showing us what needs healing. You know, it's a signpost um, to what needs healing if we're conscious and awake and willing to do the work. All right, so James is back. I'm just adding him on. Yeah, it is a great conversation, isn't it, Sal? Oh, this is awesome. What's the time? We probably have to wrap up soon. We've already been an hour. Uh, I can't believe my eyes are still open. I've been filming all day for somebody else's platform. I've uh, created an entire 10-week course for someone else. And I've been filming their content all day, which is why my face looks still a bit caked in makeup. We're back. Hello. Oh, I've got you. Right. Right. I can hear you. I can hear the sound again. I'm so oh, sorry. My no. phone crashed. I don't know what happened. Oh, how weird. But... Are you on your phone? Is it going to work or did you want to go out and come back? I'm going to okay. go out no and come worries. back in no, again. No, no, no. Don't so worry sorry. about it. It's fine. It's fine. It happens. Tech, hey? You have to kind of learn to roll with it, really, don't you? Um, now, we were in the middle of a question from somebody. Now, I can't remember what that was. Uh, do you know what? I'm just going to, when he joins back, I'm just going to crack on and ask him what he is looking for in a woman. Okay, let's add him back on. Oh, no, no, it won't let me add him. Oh, God, we're having the same problem that I had with Ben last week. No. Um Okay, James, for some reason, and I don't know why, it's not going to let me add you. So if you can, oh, I don't know what's happening. If you can, let me just like your message and see if I can add you. No, James, I'm really sorry. Can you go out and come back again? 
because it's not going to let me add you unless you can somehow, I know, emoji hand over face. Um, it's not going to let me. So either, yeah, go back out, come back in, keep trying. It doesn't, it's not liking you. Allow your viewers to request to join you as a guest. There you go. I've put, you can request to join me now, James. Let's see if that will work. Um, meanwhile, I can't remember what I was just saying, but Nina's saying, I must learn about Findhorn. It's a spiritual community in Scotland. It's magical. I come here to re-energize. Oh, how amazing. Oh, wow. Oh, I want to know more about that. Okay, let's try James again. Yes, it's going to let me add you. Okay, we're adding you now. Ah, the joys of tech. Oops. Hi, Dallin. Can you hear me? Are you there? I, I can... think I can hear. Yes. Is it okay? I think, I I think, I think we're back. <laughs> okay, because I know we have to wrap up soon. It's getting late okay. and, you, and you have pizza to eat. I um, and I have a great big jacket, sweet potato downstairs to eat as well. Oh, nice. I know. Way healthier than pizza. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it is. Um, I've got to keep my energy really high at the minute, so I'm like really consciously eating really, really well. Um, sure. I can assure you it'd be much easier just to shove a pizza in. <laughs> um, I want to know, in, in terms of dating, when you're ready to get back out there, Mm -hmm. are you clear yet are you intentional yet on what you desire to call in um i think because you know just before we got cut off we were talking about kind of like loneliness and being alone and, oh thank you, you know, i couldn't remember i'm <laughs> yes that's okay i've become so so accustomed and very comfortable in my own company mm. that I think one of the most important things that I would look for um, and will be looking for is for someone who is look is not looking for me to make them happy, you know, because I've spent time in relationships yeah. and I don't know why I'm, I'm doing what I said people should do is I'm looking, I'm telling you what I don't want, <laughs> but someone who's, so someone who is absolutely happy on their own and mm. is comfortable with understanding. I think like a true relationship is two people who, um, decide to share their, their journeys together, but they're still on their own mm. individual journeys and that they don't, mm. you know, those are two separate entities and the relationship mm. is like a third one. It's like, a, it's like, a, it's separate to the two of you. It isn't yeah. the two of you kind of crossing and becoming one person. Yeah. So someone who gets that concept, because I know that I, I look back and I think that I've certainly been addicted to being in love in a very unhealthy yeah. way in the past. And, you know, I want to make sure that I honor myself and that I show up as myself and I don't have someone who is looking for me to sacrifice the things that make me happy and doing the things mm. that I love. Um, so, yeah, just, you know, whatever. And I think, I, I think I'm quite, I'm excited, but also very nervous because I don't know what that looks like. I've never had that before. So, oh, that's very cool. How exciting. Yeah. So to not that have had be... that before. Well, um, I haven't James, because, have you heard... Yeah. Have you have you heard of the uh, there's a quote in it's a book called The Prophet by uh, somebody might be able to remind me who wrote it because I can never pronounce it. Cahill Gibbert. I can't remember. Someone will tell me. Uh, my sister's on actually and she knows the author. Sally, you know, the author of The Prophet um, because because I had a reading done from that book at my wedding two years oh, ago. Wow, OK. And uh but there is a there is a passage in there, I believe it's that book, about two trees standing side by side, big mm. solid trunks like rooted into the ground as two individual entities, but their branches mix and mingle and the leaves mix and mingle above. And yeah. it's such a it's such a beautiful visual and I feel like that's what you're calling in. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, the stuff about having done your work and understanding mm. that it's your responsibility, my stuff is mine. Mm. I will always mm. create space and, and offer to support and provide feedback and hold space. And, yeah. you know, because I think that that is that's that's a healthy, deep connection, you know. Mm. Um, but, yeah, two people who understand that their, their shit is their shit. And um, yeah. uh, but, you know, yeah, can kind of can really connect through that and understand that, you know, yeah, yeah, we can support and help each other as well. So do you think that's possible for you? Does that exist in your future? Yeah, 100 percent. 
because yeah. I believe that I, yeah, I believe that I've spent a long time in my life, you know, being in relationships that I didn't know were unhealthy or I didn't know that I, mm. I, I didn't know how, I didn't know how to relate, you know, in a healthy mm. way. And, but, mm. and, and a healthy way doesn't have to mean, you know, like safe and not diving deep and not really, you know, deeply, profoundly connecting with someone. Yeah. But I think it means doing it in the right way. And, you know, I've been looking for, I've been looking for happiness in that other person for, for my yeah. entire life up until this point. And I've only realized recently that uh, it's, it's possible to do it in a different way. So, yeah. Yes. So it's, the, it's an inside job, which is what Nina's just said. Happiness is I've an inside job. Yeah, it is. exactly. Yeah. Rather than the, being on that exhausting treadmill of always trying to find it externally. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, I'm very aware that we're sort of on the, just over the hour now. Okay. Um, but I, let me just look at my notes here. Cause I just want to check if there's a cool question that I've forgotten. Please um, do. I'm, I'm not, I'm not like, you're not in any rush. I'm not like wrap this up. I want to go eat. Like I'm, I'm good. Oh, look, I'm good. My, my sister, my sister, thanks Sal has responded. It's Kahil Gibran wrote okay. Prophet. And, and would you believe, actually, so when I was married in Bali two years ago and my sister was there, we were with a bunch of friends um, and we were all just there on holiday. And mm -hmm. James, my James proposed to me and we decided, well, look, all our, well, not all our favorite people, but a lot of our favorite people are here. Let's just get married. So five days later or six days later, we got married. Wow. And I said one night to my sister, oh, there's a really amazing quote I remember in The Prophet. And she said, would you believe we happened to pack that book. <laughs> and they oh, actually wow. had a copy of, of the pro It was like, it was another one of those, of course you have. Like it was just Absolutely. everything just was, in, it was so in flow. Every, it just was, it was so beautiful. Amazing. Um, I feel like you've kind of answered in a roundabout way most of, okay, do you know what? I've got one question for you. Um, Go for it. What scares you about dating and relationships? Uh, thing. no I definitely have you know it's it's the scariest thing in the world to me uh because of the fact that I um you know I, fe I fear the feeling of giving up control over my happiness um because that's what I've done every time I've been in love is that I have completely relinquished control over that mm. and you know that's I feel as though I've reflected and I've, I've done the work to understand why that's happened. And I've taken steps to, you know, in theory, you know, I feel like I've described a really powerful, really healthy relationship and I'm, I'm calling it in and it's going to happen. But yeah. the fear is, is definitely that. Um, yeah. The fear, the fear is that whilst in, in, in theory, it's great. The practice will be, you know, w walking the walk will be very different to talking the talk. Um, yeah. You know, we're all, we're all, yeah we're all sums of our conditioning and our experiences and our traumas yeah. and things like that. So, um, yeah, but no, I think that, that, that fear has softened, you know, because mm. I think that it's, uh, it's reached a position whereby I, I finally, I finally stopped running away from it. I finally stopped, you know, I've, I've put my arm around all that stuff now and I've just called it and sat close Beautiful. with it and listened to it for, you know, for the last few months have been really, really powerful. So, um, you know, that stuff can, can rear its ugly head if it wants, but I, I learned to, mm. to distance myself between it. Like I am not those things. They are just, yeah. you know, they're, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not me. They're just their thoughts yeah. and experiences and conditioning. So, you know, you yeah. can, you can work your way and re you can, you can work your way through that. So, um, yeah, but I was, do you know what? I used to be very scared of never finding anyone, but I'm, I'm also not scared of that anymore. So I think that's made me suddenly allow me to, it allows me to put, what I want out into the world from a place of love mm. rather than fear. So, yeah, you know, that was um, one of my favorite quotes ever is by Jim Carrey. And he says, you know, we only, that there are only ever two th reasons why we do things. And that is one out of love and the other is out of fear. Yeah. Um, totally. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm scared anymore. So because I've, I've, yeah. I love my own company now, I can be on my own and I like, I truly know how to do that now. So yeah. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Yes, self-compassion is always so important. It really, really is. Um, yeah. yeah, and and you know what? You're right. Like, you do all the healing and 
you move into a relationship as a more healed person with a more healed person mm. and neither of you are perfect and you continue the journey together and it's like once you're in relationship the healing just goes deeper it's like yeah. oh right okay because it's good the relationship it just because that happened with James and I it was like I've done so much work and I met him and I'm like oh right now I have to learn how to actually be in a relationship as this sort of more evolved conscious person like it because it yeah. required me to then practice really speaking my truth from a place of love rather than the way I used to communicate in relationship. So I had to learn, you know, to practice that. I had to learn vulnerability yeah. in a whole new way. I had, you know, it was just like, and, and so we're four years in now and it continues, you know, it's just like level, 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 level. If you're both yeah. up for it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just going to quickly read that. these last comments and then I think yeah, we sure. need to wrap up. Yeah, uh, cool. It's a journey, more layers to peel and heal. Amen. Yep. Natalie's saying James's experience mirrors my own. The good news for James is that he has arrived at these conclusions 12 years before me. <laughs> I know. Right. I, yeah, it's, um, that's yeah, really awesome. It's yeah. You're, yeah, I, I, I don't know if it sounds condescending to say you're lucky. I don't know how that sounds, but I think to reach those no. conclusions earlier is you saved a hell of a lot of time. <laughs> Yeah, and look, we yeah, we we all whenever we whenever we reach those kind of realizations is when we reach them. You know, if exactly, I, I, I've I've seen people younger than me have similar awakenings and understandings, and I've just gone, oh, I wish I'd done that when I was twenty five. You know, before I got engaged and this, that, and the other. And we, you know, it's all well and good, isn't it? But we, yeah. as long as you get there, or as long as you're kind of on your journey and you're doing doing the work and and kind of just doing as much as you can and and being kind to yourself, then. You know, I'm sorry, but even if you're in your mid forties, you know, the what you got, you probably got, you know, the way that the world works now is that we we we've probably got another forty five years to go. You know. Oh my god, so absolutely. Well, you've got, I mean, you've got saying, a lifetime. I was saying to Ben on our call last week that because I was forty two when I met James, mm. and when I turned forty, I was so excited to turn forty because I thought I actually have half a clue now. You know, I'm yeah. like I've I've lived a bit. I've healed a bunch of stuff. I actually think I'm a pretty good catch and I, I've really got something to bring to a relationship <laughs> now, you know, and Love I was that. feeling, I was feeling quite confident in that mm. and excited for myself, but excited for, wow, what could a, like a healthy healed relationship be like that this could, this is great. And, yeah. you know, once upon a time I thought 40 was like, my life was over. I realized when I hit 40 that I'm really just beginning. Yeah. I'm really just beginning. It's just getting good now. You know? <laughs> I'm excited for every, uh, you know, I, I, I think I'm lucky enough to look forward and see every decade as, as like something new and exciting. You know, I think it's really easy to yeah. sit there and go, oh, you know, your heyday was your 20s and this, and I'm yeah. like, nah, you know, <laughs> no. my 20s, like 30s totally. are going to be brilliant, 40s yeah. are going to be great, 50s are going to be yeah. fantastic, like whatever comes up, like you, it is yeah. what you make of it. So yeah, totally. like, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that too. Izzy's saying you're an absolute beaut. Yes. Oh, thanks. That's hers. <laughs> Absolute beaut. Okay, right. Well, I think we probably need to wrap up, but just one last. <sighs> Can we call forth some words of wisdom from you for the single ladies that are watching? What do they need to know? What if you could impart any thoughts or wisdom to them? Um, that there are conscious men. There are mm. kind, you know, and actually, the, I think that. There are a lot more men out there who are struggling because they don't quite know the work they need to do, but they want to do it. Um, yes. And I think that one of the things that I have said many times to women who follow me on my page and I have conversations with women who are in partnerships with men who, you know, are struggling and don't know how to do their work. And, you mm -hmm. know, there's this disconnect is I think men, men are raised in a world where someone once described it as that women actually have a, a level of privilege around their emotions that they're, they're, they're born in and in, in raised in a world where mm. you know women do have a privilege and where they're allowed to explore all, all realms of their emotions in a way mm. where men are actually very shamed and very stunted and sheltered away yeah. from all of the the feminine energies and the emotions mm. so you know if you are with someone who if you're with a man who's struggling to connect and, and articulate you know what they're feeling it's so for some men, it's like being asked to speak another language that they don't yeah. speak. Um, yeah. So just yeah. 
you know, have faith, be kind, you know, give them the space that they need. And um, yeah, just, just give them as much love as you can. Um, because they, they, you know, more often than not, then you might end up, you know, it might, there's a reality that sometimes it, they may not quite be able to do the work there and then, but just trust in men's intentions yeah. and know that there are men who really want to connect with you on the level that you want to as well. Cause we all actually deeply want the same thing. Oh my God. That that's the nugget right there. We do. We all deeply want the same thing. Don't yeah. we? hundred yeah. percent. We do. So yeah, yeah that's... we do. And <laughs> finally, are you promoting anything at the minute? Is there anything around your business that you'd like to share with this community right now? Um, well, you know, at the moment, my, I'm predominantly working with men and I just launched mm -hmm. a free group for men to kind of, it's, it's like a safe space. So, you know, for me being the honest bloke and what I've created yeah. there is I've actually yeah. created a free, a free, it's a private group. So it's a safe container for any and all men. So whether it's to Beautiful. show up and discuss, uh, you know, their challenges, not feeling good enough, issues in their relationships, mm -hmm. um, but also resources. And we're, we're doing challenges like we're doing a weekly challenge where we try and pick up new habits to help kind of empower us and all sort of stuff in there. So, yeah, yeah and that, that's called the Honest Blokes Society. So we're all a bunch of Brilliant. honest blokes in there and we all do our stuff and, and do the work. So uh, if you know any men that want to get involved, just you yeah, know, well, follow, fo follow me on Instagram. I talk about it on there all the time. Um, so it's I just the that. honest bloke and um yeah come and because i think a lot of the stuff that i share as well finally just to say is that whilst it's mm -hmm. through the lens of a man and it's aimed at men it's actually very universal and women will will you know hopefully hear and feel things that are not mm -hmm. gender specific um mm -hmm. like i say emotions are universal emotions are the same for all of us and mm -hmm you know, hopefully some of you know, a lot of it will, will land and kind of connect for, for any women who want to kind of follow and listen as well. So. Yeah, I agree. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank and you. ladies, if there's anybody watching this who's single and you're ready to prepare <laughs> yourself to meet your soulmate, I'm running a free five day challenge called meet your soulmate. And we start on Monday. So a week today. So this time next week, I'll be hosting a Facebook live inside that group. We've have a hundred women already signed up, which is so blowing exciting. my brain. Yeah. A hundred women that are up for doing the work, clearing out anything that's blocking them to having him arrive. Like this is deep, powerful work that we're doing. Right. So it's that's amazing. Five days of that. I've totally cleared my calendar. I am in there supporting you, teaching you, Oh my God, so much. Going Maybe down. I'll do one there for the men and then we'll just all oh, match yes, up. Yes, yes. Well, somebody said in this, in these <laughs> comments somewhere that we need a matchmaking service for like conscious awake people who are doing their work. And somebody messaged me after my chat with Ben last week and said, can you and Ben not like set up a, a dating site for conscious awake people? <laughs> and, and we're both like, great idea, but I don't have time. <laughs> yeah. Just, but it is, but it's needed, you know, it's like, what is that platform where those people come together? There's a business idea yeah. in this. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, hold on. Let me just quickly read these last comments. Mm. Uh, Danielle saying, James, have you heard of Plight Club? Club? Plight Club on Instagram aimed at men's mental health. I met oh, no. the guy who is running it at a retreat. There you go. Plight Ooh, Club. Exciting. I'll check nice. That out. Uh, role james to help men heal their masculine and give them a safe place to be supported amen awesome yes yay hi sana nice to see you as well yay to all of it okay um i'll share links to my challenge below this and i will also pop a link below to like the handle for james's instagram would that be the best thing to do yeah that's yeah. definitely i i, I yeah. can then share everything from there that would yeah. be great yeah cool all right james dallin thank you so much for being with us tonight it's just awesome i love your honesty love it thank you it's been so a pleasure refreshing being here. thank you <laughs> yay all right have a Cheers. beautiful evening go enjoy your pizza thank you enjoy your dinner too I'll speak <laughs> thank to you, you. Soon. bye everybody thanks for joining bye. us <laughs> bye